Well, some good news for the Royals. King Charles is set to return to public duties by attending an Easter service at Windsor Castle this coming Sunday, uh, accompanied by Queen Camilla. It's absolutely great news. Uh, the Queen has been taking on the majority, of course, of official mm -hmm. royal duties as both the King and the Princess of Wales continue with their cancer treatment. Yesterday, Queen Camilla took the time to celebrate one of her great passions, reading. The Queen unveiled new research from her Reading Room charity that just five minutes of reading per day can reduce stress by nearly 20%. Amazing. This is fascinating. The chief executive of the Queen's Reading Room, who's known Camilla for more than a decade, Vicky Perrin, and one of the world's best-selling authors and friend of the charity, the brilliant writer Ken Follett, uh, joins us now. Hi, nice to see you both here. Hello. Um, I should say this is fascinating, because anecdotally, I think, we've all kind of known, mm. uh, for as long as I can remember, that, that reading does you good in all sorts of ways. But this is actually provable scientific evidence now, isn't it? Who wants to go first? Vicky, because exactly. you're, you're behind the research. Yes, it's such a fascinating study. Mm. Exactly as you say, Richard, I think we, we all instinctively know that books are good for us, mm. but this study has proven it helps to reduce our stress in just five minutes by almost 20 per cent. It helps to helps us to manage our stress. It, um, it helps to improve our concentration and focus. It really can kind of set us How up. How did you manage these tests? How did you get this evidence? So we used a combination of different factors, all developed by neuroscientists, right. including brain scans. <laughs> so we were able to see the electrical activity going on in the brain and uh, the use of medical grade smartwatches, which can help us sort of read a person's emotional state right and what was really fascinating was to see the whole of the brain lighting up like the night sky when a person is reading a book it's absolutely extraordinary ken for you ken follett how many novels have you <laughs> uh written in your lifetime so far 1500 and <laughs> i've written 37 books wow, mm. wow. i mean good news for you <clears throat> isn't it because you know we all need to read more i love the fact that the queen said we're advised to do five a day when it comes to fruit and veg. We're advised to do 10,000 steps. And now, pick up a book, read your five a day. And for us in the book world, it's absolutely wonderful that Her Majesty is promoting books and reading. Mm. And um, the, the results of this study are really quite amazing. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, when people read a story, okay, we now know it reduces stress and it helps you manage stress. But Sometimes I'm trying to make people stress. I was going to ask you this. <laughs> exactly. So what's so OK? I can see why possibly reading some Emily Bronte or something like that would calm you down, or a nice, soft, you know, romantic novel. But you're, let's say you're reading a blood and guts thriller yes. and, and, you've, and you're getting to the end of a chapter yeah. where the tensions are being ratcheted up. Doesn't that raise your tension levels? Well, what's so interesting is that um, the, just the act of reading is an act of escapism. So even if you're reading something <sighs> which is getting your heart racing and your, you know, your pulse going, you're reading OK, Follett thriller, it actually, that, that pure act of escapism, of taking yourself out of your everyday right. problems and giving your brain a different kind of workout is good for you. I think it's a marriage saver as well. I know that, <laughs> uh, seriously, I know that when Judy and I have had the very occasional argument, <laughs> once every 15 years, no, whenever we have a, a, just a few minutes in another room with a book, really does give you perspective and calms you down, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Books, you Doesn't know. it, Judy? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, Vicky Karam. Just to say, really, you know, um, we, we live in a, in a world where we're distracted by so many things. We have to multitask so much. But what's really interesting about uh, reading, literally just for five minutes, is that we're, we're taking our brain from going to this, to this, to that, to this one act of concentration. Yeah. And I think that's such a valuable thing yeah. for us to read. Well, it, it, helps, it, helps, it helps you. Reading stories helps you, your concentration. And you can see why, can't you? Because if the book is any good, you, you have no trouble concentrating. In fact, if somebody comes along and says, I'm, I'm awfully sorry to interrupt you, you want to say, well, shut up, go <laughs> yeah, away, exactly. I'm reading this book. Yeah. So the concentration is easy with a good novel, and then maybe when you need to concentrate on something else, mm. you're kind of practised at it. But why, why does it only seem to work with one of these, OK, an old-fashioned, crinkly, rustling paper book, as opposed to one of these? 
Well, our research is suggesting that it doesn't actually matter quite how you read. Um, so it's more about the act of reading itself. So we included the use of audio books in our study as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, five minutes uh, to sit down reading a physical book is quite easy to do, but it's even easier if you're popping an audio book on while you're making breakfast or walking the dog or doing the laundry or whatever it might be. It's just about getting stories into your life. Yeah. Ken, because I can imagine there are thousands of parents watching who will say to their children over breakfast this morning, you see, mm. it's a good thing. Get off your phone and get back into the book. Do you find that a lot of, there's a point of where children who used to be absorbed in a book just can't get back into reading? You know, if we want kids to read, we have to give them books that they like. And look at the Harry Potter phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, my two, my two uh, granddaughters, uh, would be outside WH Smith's at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning to buy one, each of them would buy a copy of the new Harry Potter when mm -hmm. it was coming out early in the morning. These are kids who normally would not be seen before 12 yes. o'clock on a Saturday morning. <laughs> yes. uh, JK Rowling did that and, and, there, and there are other examples. Right now, for example, loads of teenagers, particularly teenage girls, are reading these romantic fantasies. Millions, literally millions. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, those books are selling more than mine. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you a cracking example, actually. On this programme a few weeks ago, we interviewed <clears> the now <throat> young man who was effectively kidnapped by his mother and grandfather and, and made to live in France and across the Pyrenees and stuff. And he was pretty much isolated from, from uh, people his own age, led a very lonely existence. And we asked him how he basically kept sane, and he said, reading. Mm. Reading did it for me, and specifically Harry Potter books. But reading, yeah. he said, saved him. Um, Vicky, the Queen is going through um, a challenging time at the moment. Obviously, lots of uh, pressure on the royal family. She is being praised for just keeping on going. Mm. And I imagine that she escapes into a good book and now is probably better time than any to do that. Her Majesty is an absolute force of nature. She's an incredible woman and I think what she's doing with reading, what she's doing with this research is so important. You know, she finds great solace like so many of us in a good book and she has such a, you know, she's one of the, the most well-read well uh, individuals I've mm. ever met and, you know, um, I think she, she delves into, into great books, she recommends them, she's doing such great work to encourage well, us all it's great to, to see her and the King back in business on Sunday, isn't it? Really exactly. good news, that. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you both very oh, much indeed. You. If you would have one book recommendation <laughs> for teenagers, maybe, who are watching this morning, what would it be? Um, I've just finished the most extraordinary book. It's called This Is Happiness by Niall Williams. It's beautiful, it's funny, it's moving. Can't recommend it highly enough. And Ken? Well, for teenagers, Colleen Hoover. Yes. Um, the, it ends this with end, us. It ends with us. And, yes. you know, older people think it's unsophisticated because this is a story set in the world of adolescence. But, the, but the, the, the arc of the story, he loves me, he loves me not. Mm. He loves me. She does that superbly. Mm -hmm. she, I think she deserves to be a bestseller. Are you writing one at the moment? Yes, I am. When, when will we finish? I can't tell you any, about it because the publishers won't let me. Oh, OK. <laughs> Where they, you know, they like to make an announcement. Yeah, they like the splash. Yeah, 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 I know that. yeah. and yeah. if I... Yeah. All right. That sounds like a chapter-ending cliffhanger, yes. where we'll leave yes. it. Ken Foley, thank you very much indeed. Vicky Perrin, thank you thank very you. much indeed.